Hi, I'd like to show you what we've added in to ZMAX 12 IE in terms of its ability with radiant source models. And these are the most accurate way of modeling any kind of light source because they're best based on measured data of the real lamp. And what we do is we take the real lamp, we put it in a goniometer, we take photographs of the source at all angles and then from those photographs we compute the radiance of the source and then can generate rays for ray tracing applications. I want to show you what we've done to make this really so much easier and better for you. First of all, if you click on Tools, Sources and Download Radiant Source Model Data, you'll see that there are now 608 source models in the catalogue and they're across some 60 different suppliers with eight different types of lamp included and as I say over 600 different uh, sources in this, in this catalogue. So there's an ever-increasing number of sources available plus we can measure your source for you if you need something that's not in the catalogue. Assuming that you've got your measurement however, this is how you can use it now. We go into Analysis, Source Viewers, Radiant Source Viewer and the source that I want to use is this particular Cree source. And there's a couple of things about this that are absolutely fantastic and you really just need to understand exactly what we've got here. First of all, this is a this is a measurement of a real LED. So you can see all the structure that we have in this LED die. And if I just zoom in on that, you can see there's, you know, just an awful lot of structure here. This is the kind of stuff that makes projects go wrong because it's easy to design something assuming that the source is a flat uniform uh, rectangle uh, and it's not. It's got all this nasty structure in it and that can come and bite you later on in the design process. It's typically when you build things. Uh, so there's great data here. Also, I mean, you can look at this data at any different sets of angles that you want. So if I just kind of go off axis a little bit, you can see what this looks like at this particular angle. And I'm now just going to use the uh, cursor keys to move the source around so you can see what this source looks like at different angles. And you may ask yourself, well, you know, what what is this stuff here? What What's this strange looking thing here? Well, we can now show you that really nicely. Let me just go back to looking straight down onto this source and I'll do window clone to make a copy and then I'll do Alignment, and I'm going to show Alignment Image 1. Now here is Alignment Image 1, and this is just a photograph taken of the unlit source. And if you zoom in on that, you can see all this structure inside the LED is what's giving you all this structure in the, the lit appearance of the model, of the LED. So there's all that kind of detail there, but also just notice out here, we've got the electrodes on the printed circuit board and that's what's giving us this electrode structure here. Now it's actually slightly odd, it's one of these things you just need to check out. Azimuth here of this measured image is 90 degrees and of this image here is at 0 degrees. So this is actually rotated 90 degrees with respect to that. Uh, but this is the electrodes that you're seeing some reflected light off of. If I just rotate this around, I go to the, the next alignment image, there's a particular view of this LED at that uh, angle. And if I go on to image 3, there's a view of it at this angle, an inclination of, zero, of uh, uh, 90. And here it is at 90-90. So you can see there that what this is giving me here, I've got an image of the side of the LED. If I just enter that same data into here. Here's the nearest photograph we have. It's actually at 1990. We're actually getting very, very little light. Only 19 lumens is coming down from that angle. But what's really good is that I can see easily using the active cursor, which appears up here in the title bar. If I use the active cursor to locate the zero, zero points 
of this uh, source, which is around about here. It's about the zero, zero point. I can also see over here where the zero, zero point is. And so I can tie exactly where the source is optically to where it is mechanically. And that's very, very important because it means then that I can position this thing with absolute certainty in terms of knowing just where, just where things actually are. So the ability to see the alignment images as well as the measured data is a great usability Im uh, improvement because you don't make mistakes in terms of thinking about where, where things actually are. Then when we go on to look at the uh, ray generation capabilities, there's even more uh, 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 capabilities here. Because if I go to Tools, Sources, and Generate Radiant Source Model Rays, you'll see that in addition to all the spectral data that we can add in, there's an important new setting here which lets me generate the rays on different surfaces. Previously, we generated rays on this first option, which is just a flat uh, plane normal to the, uh, uh, the source. But I can now generate rays on a sphere, on a cylinder, on a plane, on a box, closest to axes and such like. And because I know, this, I know that this source is hemispherical, so if I look at it from this side view here, that's a sphere, and it's a sphere of about 1.5 millimeters uh, radius. I can choose to generate the rays on a sphere, and I can choose 1 1.5, 1 1.8, 1.3, and in fact I've generated some rays where I used 1.3 millimeters as the radius so that the rays are generated inside the object. And if I just close this and go to this uh, right now, here's actually rays that I've generated. Uh, here's the CAD object that represents the, the physical body. The rays are being generated from inside of the object, and I have a really nice setting here on the CAD object which tells ZMAX to uh, that uh, pause. start again. There's a really nice setting here on ZMAX which tells ZMAX that for this object it should ignore rays on launch. So what that means is that rays are just going to fire out and they're going to ignore this CAD object. But if any any optical component in the system causes rays to be reflected back onto it, then there's a CAD object here for the rays to interact with. Uh, and so rays could refract, reflect, do whatever they like to do at that point. So that's what we've added into the uh, Radiant Source models. We've also added some extra capabilities. Uh, if you have a monochromatic data file, you can add spectral data to it. Um, if you've got multiple spectral files, you, you can concatenate them into a single file just to make life easier. You can convert your ray set into an IES file if you want. And we also have a library of IES files that you can download as well. So that's uh, the improvements we've made to the Radiant Source model. This capability of actually seeing the, uh, the alignment images, I think, greatly enhances how much uh, interpretation you can do of the results. And uh, we think this is absolutely fantastic. We hope you enjoy using it. Thank you very much for watching.